Take you to the bar first. Bar, bar. Mark Belm, Super Training Gym, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. I'm here today with Max Aida, and Max is gonna teach me how to squat. Everybody kinda of already knows my squat, my squat, it's kinda of shitty, and it's just not going that great, so I'm gonna have Max uh, work on some tips with me here. We're gonna go through it like he's a brand new lifter, like first time I've ever seen him squat, and I'll just start from the beginning, I'll watch him do some movements, and then kinda of go over what I wanna change and show him that, and then. I already know a couple exercises I'm gonna have him do afterwards, so I'll go through that after. Right, Let's do like five. Uh, people ask me all the time why my hands are out here. My hands are out here because I'm old and I'm not very flexible, so this is what my hands. Um, you're also gonna notice I'm gonna squat with the bar kind of high on my uh, back, and that's also because it's hard for me to really lock the bar in position. If I can get my hands in closer, I'd be able to lock it in position where you kind of normally see most power lifters lock it in. Uh, Max has squatted some really big weights uh, with a high bar, and that's why I wanted him to try to fix me up. Hop in there, Max, and cool. Show us, uh, what it looks like when you do a squat. So, all right, this is lower the rack a little bit. Oh, it should be all right. Another plate on there. My best, my best squat is 738 at 220 with wraps. My best front squat is 600 without a belt. No belt, no wraps. I did that when I was weightlifting, so. So, what I, would, what I would do different, it looks like what you do is, is where you put your knee in relation to your foot. You set up, the width isn't really a big deal, right. but when you set up, you're still in this place where you're set back and you're trying to sit into it a lot, sit right. back into it a lot. The way I teach, so if you're brand new, the way I would teach you is, I want you to keep your weight in the middle of your foot, okay. get off your heel. And the first thing to go from here is your knee. Break your knee, break at the knee, and as your knee descends forward to wherever it's going to go, let it, let it kind of shift forward, you're going to then descend your hips down all the way. Your knee's going to come out in front, obviously. From the bottom, you have to keep your knee in the same position. So from the bottom, what happens for you, 
you're going to come here and you're going to try and push it back. Right. You're kind of doing this thing where you're artificially restricting your knee moving forward. So you're okay. sitting like this, right? And then what happens is because your quads aren't doing anything, your low back or your upper back is going to round and give out. Right. And every time you're going to give out in your back because the leg wants to keep straightening. All the time. I round over yeah, I think you'd fix a lot of it by, by staying in the middle of your foot, descending as upright as possible by keeping your quads, your knee in front of you. So when you squat down, think about your knee coming over your foot and keeping it over your toes in the beginning of the squat here, at least from here to here. Then you can just finish the top, right? right? Just kind of keeping it in that same position. Imagine that you push your knee into position, like there's a wall in front. Right. You push it into that wall and hold it against that wall until you come out of the hole. All right. right? So I would come down midfoot. My knee comes down. It stays forward, out of the hole. Here, here. Keeping your hips a lot closer to the barbell, huh? Yeah. Slightly, yeah. but not this way. Your hip's going to move back and forth a little yeah. and your knee's going to move back and forth a little. The thing you want to avoid is, is not letting your knees travel forward. Right. And you don't want to shove them forward excessively, but you want to be in your quads, right? The biggest thing, lifters that, that come in that are like short torso, long leg, right. the same thing. They stick, they get stuck like that. When they squat, they don't get stronger squatting, right? Are your, are your hips a little bit like this in the beginning of the lift? Just neutral. They're just neutral. I always keep my spine neutral. Right? The biggest thing for you is, is when you descend, you got to start midfoot and initially push your knee forward. So you're on your heel, yeah, push your knee forward. Stay in the middle of your foot and squat down. Drop your hips down in between your legs. Yeah. And my range of motion's a lot better that way, too. Yeah. Is that a little bit different than a lot of powerlifters say to like sit back more? Uh, I think a lot of powerlifters talk about sitting back, but a lot squat like that. Chad squats like that for sure. I mean, yeah. uh, you know. Guys, uh, you're built a lot more like me. You have shorter legs and a longer torso. I have bigger arms. I think you're wrong. But, uh, you know, it's a, definitely that's what I would start. I mean, yeah. into the quads. You have that awesome machine over there that will change your life. That's like the Belt best. Squat. I love that machine. I think it kills, yeah. That, that's, that took Christy from, Christy Hawkins from 340 to 530. I got so excited that I had a belt squat oh, it's, that I did hundreds of reps when I first got it. And basically, basically worked my way out of squatting for a little while because I... Is this too sore? Oh, this I, move? it was terrible. I just had, I guess, almost like chronic like tendonitis. And, or not e even on my kneecap, but... In the leg. Around the knee. Yeah, yeah. It sucked. Yeah. All right, let me do it again. Let's try, try it again. again. Just keep your weight in the middle of your foot. 225-pound squat. Make sure you record this one. This is for all haters. There you go. So midfoot, break of the knee. Good. Keep your knee over the foot as you stand. There you go. Holy shit. <laughs> Forward. Yeah, that's better. Up. It's uh, messing with my balance a little bit, but it feels awesome. It's midfoot. Good. This is good, huh? It feels great. So here, video, I'll show you when you, most of the time what happens with people when they squat, if you watch my knee, they're squatting down here or they, they would do whatever. If they bend their knee, they squat normal, right? They come down here. The first thing that happens is this, the knee moves back, right? Because you're, you're trying to extend your leg. Your quad's trying to extend your leg, but it's not strong enough. And right. so you end up doing this, and then you do a good morning. If your back is strong enough, you can do a good morning. If not, you just miss. Right. Or you round your upper back and it's over. If, you, if you're struggling to get up, the knee's, the knee's gotta stay in that position, right? You have to squat down, keep the knee over the same part of your foot, the initial like three quarters right. of the, or the bottom quarter of the squat, out of the hole. Once you come out of the hole, it's gonna be different, but you have to keep your leg in that position. It would be good for me to uh, say, since this is a little different for me, to yeah. so do this like three or four times a week. Yeah, I would do, you, know, you could even squat, so yeah. like this weight. Medium weights for lots of reps, lots of sets, you know, three to four reps, maybe right. five, six sets. And, and kind of medium weights because your quads will get built up a lot more. Yeah, they have no you, quads. You also got to think about when you squat, you don't want to have a squat that turns into, that goes from here to here, 
right? Here, right. this. Because you're not ever going to get your legs stronger. I've, you've seen the videos. <laughs> uh, when you squat down, you sink and stand. Sink and stand. Yeah. Here, here. Because the most important part for our built like us, people built like us, is the initial out yeah. of the hole. I should point out that he's able to do that and make that look so flawless from years and years and years of squatting. Yeah. Building up his quads. He's, he does a great job of staying very upright when he squats. And you did like squat every day for yeah. how the fuck ever long, right? Yeah, 13 years maybe, something, <laughs> something stupid. <laughs> 13 years. Something too but long. Yeah, load up a little bit more yeah. weight and see if I can keep the form yeah. similar. Try to get the diaper going. Power lifting diaper. Good. Okay. So, body weight midfoot. Break at the knee. Keep the knee in position. Good. Keep those knees over the foot. Up. A little more. Good. One more. Keep the knee forward a little more. Keep it forward. There you go. Yeah, I saw a tendency to sit back. To almost try to clear the hips first and then bend Yeah, back. yeah, you're trying to drop. And when you get heavy, when it gets heavy, you're probably going to set your hips into a position. All so right. when I did, when I switched from like high bar to like lower bar squat, the only difference is that when the bar comes down, your torso goes forward. So then you just set your hips back. Right. Instead of pushing them back, you just keep them where they are. So if it's a low bar squat, the bar's lower, my hips are here. In a high bar squat, I just let them shift here and do the exact same thing. My knees come forward and then I stand right. up. You just get a little bit better leverage because yeah. your back is, you know, the bar's lower. You're really about pushing the knees out. Are you? Mine just do that. I mean, that's maybe you know, you're a little bow legged or no? No, I think my hips are just kind of wide. Yeah. Just, well, and then Olympic never, lifting, you're always yeah shoving I mean, knees out of the way, right? I've never had a thing where I forced them out a lot. Right. Um, I always, for me, what's most it's important is that the knee is traveling in the right place and it stays at the bottom. So when you sit smooth and controlled to here and get tension on the quad as you get lower. Right. Right at the bottom, you push here and fight to keep this in position here. Okay. As soon as you come back, if you rock this way, you're off your quads, right? right? I'll try it again. Yeah. Here to learn. White belt. Good. Set up on the midfoot. Bend your knee. Good, keep them forward, keep them forward. There you go. Keep it forward, legs. Good. Good. How'd that feel? It hurts my knee a lot less. Oh, good. I think, I think because I was kind of in here, that I was actually getting a little bit more tension on. Yeah, the knee didn't. Kind of the wrong way, right? Yeah. Because maybe the quad wasn't involved as much. Yeah, I think so. For sure. That feels pretty good. The easiest way to think about it is, is I set up, I find my balance in the middle of my foot. I'm all, you know, everything else is the same. We, we already know how to do that stuff. And I break at the knee and then I drop my, I open my hips up like Cohen talked about, right? Opens open the taint. the taint. I just break my knees and then open up the hips and I squat straight down. And then I come back up the same way. Just turn sideways. Right so the camera hips straight. Kind of see he's dropping his hips through like his lower body, you know, dropping his upper body yeah. through his lower body. And the knee, drop the hips open, and then push from the same muscles. Push from the quads, and you'll finish this way. Come on, marshmallows too. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a little yeah. sloppy, but but are you? I mean, it might be just because we're doing this kind of randomly. Are you like intentionally like bending a tiny bit? Like I saw a little. Probably because I just got these weird shoes got on. Shitty shoes I, on. Just, I'm just trying to find my position. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can try again. Let me see if I do a better one. Yeah, they're so weak right now. I have to do something to them. Your tempo. I mean, it looks very smooth. 
but I like to go. I think that's. I mean, what about? I'm just saying, like, I understand you're talking yeah, about like training, but what about your tempo personally? Do you have a preference to accelerate towards the hole or to only concentrate on blowing the weight up? Uh, what? You know, it depends how strong my legs are. Yeah. So, if my legs feel strong, then I like to go. I like to descend, start smooth. Because it's like, it's like, you know, you're rolling a bowling ball. If you go fast, it's off, it's, you're fucked up. So you just open up, you start to like uh, set up and then guide it down. So you've set everything in motion. You've broken all the links the right way. And then you come, you know, move down. Then you drop for the bottom and go for it. But I don't bottom out. I don't like bounce off the bottom. I want to sit and then push. Yeah, Cone talked about moving you know, moving aggressively and moving fast aren't necessarily the same thing. Deliberate, right? Yeah, you're being deliberate yeah. and fast. Never, never, there's never a, uh, uh, right? It's always a down, stand, here, here. What are your thoughts on belt, no belt? You know, Some I, of that kind of stuff. for the first, I never put a belt on until I started powerlifting. My best yeah, beltless. You're telling Jesse Burdick, like, what the fuck does this thing do? Yeah. My best beltless squat was like 665. Right. Uh, no sleeves, just a belt. Yeah, um, and I weighed maybe like 205 at the time. And that's when I was squatting like every day. Right. But uh, you know, I put the belt on and, and got a little bit more out of it. I mean, a belt is preference. You definitely get more out of it, but right. you know, some people like to train with it. Some people don't. Some people put it on from the moment they get out of bed in the morning and right. then they're just wearing it all so day. Like in terms of like training tactics, you don't think it matters a whole lot one way if, or the other, whether you wear one for a while or don't wear one for a while. If I was you, what I would do is I'd squat without a belt, yeah. without just, just whatever you need to feel good for a while. And then as you start to build up into the training, add it in a little bit later. Just so I can feel my legs more yeah. and have yeah, everything. Yeah, you want to feel like you're focusing your legs. If you have to use a little bit less weight that way, or the belt takes it off, you're also right. not leaning on the belt a lot. You're trying to do something that feels different. Right. That's what I would do. And then, you know, as you get closer to a meet or whatever, you want to test where you're at, maybe put a belt on and train for a few weeks and then see what you can do. Should I try to go up one more time? Yeah, i put those greens on. The whole bitch about powerlifting is, uh, you know, you raise one thing up and other things kind of go to shit. You know, right now my, my bench is jacked up because my elbow is jacked up, but I can still bench over 500 pounds without any problem. Um, and my deadlift is way up. I did 695 for two and also pulled 705 pretty easy for a single. A lot of those things are going really good. So I've been a little bit out of practice in the squat. Haven't been hammering the way that I need to. And so that's why we got this guy showing me what's up. Can't have it all. You can't have it all. And uh, you know, as long as I've been training, you gotta always keep, keep a uh, white belt mentality. There's always more room to learn. You know, I'm no master or black belt of anything. The way I look at it is I haven't done anything. The best is still yet to come. And uh, if I want to keep training and keep having fun in the sport that I love, I need to stay healthy. And I also need to keep hitting PRs. Otherwise, why the hell are you doing it for? Let's go, Mark. Good. Midfoot. Knees first. Keep them forward, keep them forward. Come forward a little more on the knee. Bend the legs. Hips through. Good. Good. I can really feel that now because I can feel it taking, the, taking a lot of the pressure out of my back, especially on the last one. I don't know how it looked. It looks good. But it, it, it feels good. Yeah. And it feels like, especially with that weight, you know, those of you watching at home, this is why you can't really practice these kind of moves with maximal weights. You need sub-maximal yeah, weights. Yeah. This kind of weight would be perfect for me to do multiple sets and reps on. I could literally feel my actual quads working rather than me getting, every time I come out of the bottom of something, least I do a lot of this. As he said, I fire here first. And I'm also cueing from the top. I'm doing a lot of this. And I'm getting a lot of bend in the, in the lower back. But now, I can really feel the quads. Yeah. I think the reason that happens, right, people, people watch a lift and they see a guy do this and they say, oh, his, his upper back's weak or his back's weak. The reality is, 
what happens is your body shifts the pressure to what's gonna hold it. Right. So if your legs are weak, if your legs were super, super strong and your back was infinitely weak, you'd have to squat and bolt up. There'd be no other way to do it. You couldn't tip over even an inch, right? So if you extrapolate that to be how it is with a weakness, right. if your legs are weak, the first thing you're gonna do is put it to the only place that can support the load, which is your back. If your legs are weak or you hit a weight that you can't squat and your legs are strong, you just kind of stop. Because you tip over, you're not going to be able to grind it out. So you're just done. Your back is way stronger than mine. You pulled 700 conventional. My best conventional is like 630. Right? But I'm wall squatting as much as you. Shit, more, yeah. So your back strength, you should be, if you bring your leg strength, your quads up. Right. I mean, there's no reason you can't get 7 or 5 to sleep. Right. In fact, I think you could in a few months. Maybe, maybe well, however long it takes. There you go. He put me on the spot, didn't he? Whatever, whatever shape you're in. <laughs> put me on blast on my own channel. Um, let's uh, put it back down to two plates. Yeah. And I want you just to walk us through uh, exactly how you squat. When I set up for squats, first thing I do is I get my, I get my hands in the bar where it's gonna be on, like if I'm competing or if I'm going for a heavy squat, I generally kind of force my hands inside a tiny bit more to get tighter in the upper back. But if I'm just training, I'll, I'll leave them a little looser so that my hands and wrists and I have an injury here and shoulders, it just beats you up, right? So how did you first determine or how do you help people determine where their hands are? So, I hurt my wrist a couple years ago, severely, and I couldn't get my hand around the bar. What I did was, I, I kind of had a little workaround. I put some straps, lifting yeah, straps on the bar, you, right? And you wrapped it around and the I, bar. Yeah, so I learned that my hands didn't need to be squeezing the bar. I, didn't, I learned how to keep my upper back tight by getting rid of my hands, right. so I could focus on what my back did. Um, when you're setting someone's grip, generally closer is going to be tighter, but tighter is tighter. So right. if your hands are wide and your upper back's tight, that's still good. So right? if someone is brand new and they got some good, decent mobility, you probably want to just kind of jam them in as yeah, close I mean, as comfortable for them. Close as comfortable, but manageable too. Because you right. can't have somebody squatting four days a week or three days a week if their arms and elbows and wrists are beat up. Right. So, you know, you can get your back plenty tight. I squatted well over 600 with no hands on the bar, right? right. Um, so you can set up as whatever is going to be most manageable in training. You obviously need to develop more flexibility if it's, you know, sl stopping you or it's right. causing you problems. But. And then out real wide, just in, for the most part, just isn't really uh, ideal. You're not going to yeah. see most of the world records aren't being broke that way. No. Although the guy on the wall, Stan Efforting, smashed some really big weights that way. And then also, uh, you know, Matt Wenning smashes some big weights that way. But these, are, these guys have so much muscle on their back, right. they're able to kind of keep their hands wide and, and rest the bar wherever yeah, they want. Yeah, for sure. So I'll set it up, I'll generally just start where the, my hands are probably about an equal hand width wider than my shoulders at least. Um, in this case, it's probably a little wider than that because I haven't been on the bar for a while, but once I do that, sorry, once I do that, I, I Go this way. yeah, put the hood up. Once I set my hands where I want, I put my head under the bar and position the bar evenly on top of my back. For a high bar squat, if you turn around, a high bar squat, I like to put the bar right here on the meaty part of the traps, right? Not up here on your neck. Because if you tip forward or if it rolls, it's just gonna hurt. It's not really necessary to be up there. Right here is great. He's got a huge shelf right there. The only difference between a low bar and a high bar for me, from here to about here, this, that inch. It's maybe one distance of the bar down lower and it sits on the rear delts a little bit more, right? That's about the only difference in bar placement. So we'll do high bar today. So I'll set up, I put my head under the bar. When you're, when you're getting underneath the bar right here, are you doing anything yeah. with your back so, or some people? Exactly, as I get under the bar, I'm pulling my shoulder blades together and positioning myself just like a, you know, almost like a lat pull down, right? Where you're pulling down here in your mid back, pulling my shoulder blades together. And then I've been doing it for so long, I you don't even realize what I do, right? You also see slightly tilted up his torso a little bit. I don't right. know if he's aware he did that, but. That's what happened. What I like to do is position my upper body first and then I'll get everything else squared away. So I'll come in here, tight upper back. Everything is wound up tight now and then I position a tight back against the bar right where I want. Once that's done, I keep that position and I step my feet under the bar. Once I get under the bar, I want to wind up my torso and straighten out my back. So I keep my spine in neutral position. So from here I keep my abs tight, everything is wound up and my legs are what's picking up out of the rack. And then I stand up. Right? It's important. Watch them from the back real quick. Yeah. To see. Here. You're kind of working it in there, kind of like the way Cone talked about. And then I stand up. So, <coughs> the 
second part is, oh, the second part is <laughs> once I stand up, I make sure I'm standing up before I do anything else. A lot of times you see people, they'll pick the bar up out of the rack in one motion and step back. I like to stand up first so I can find my balance, right? right? To me, the balance where your weight is is super important. From here, tight, get set, stand up first and find the bar. Take my feet where I want them. Once I'm in position, I make sure that I keep my abs tight and my hips tight. If my hips are loose and I try to find my balance here with my feet and then move, I'm gonna be all sloppy. So I kinda keep my abs tight and my body tight. Put my weight in the middle of my foot. Kept my breath. And then break at the knee to the midfoot, stay there, open my hips up, and then drive. Here. Tight. Back in. As you get, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff as I do it that I realize I'm, I'm thinking about and saying, but you hit the bottom of the squat, you drive with your legs, and you push into the bar with your upper back, right? You wanna turn on your, your legs and your hips at the same time, so that when you come out of the hole, you open up, rather than just one or the other. Makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, there's a lot of little things going on that I'm realizing as I do it, <laughs> you know, you don't yeah. realize after years of doing it, but that's how I start, I mean, the, uh, what about your uh, foot positioning? Right. Um, you know, how wide do you go? And should your feet be straight so that you point it out? For me, a lot of that stuff is, is so ingrained in what I've done for years. I always, I always step out and I always turn my feet out a little bit. Right? They're always going to be out because when I squat down, my hips need to get in between my, my legs. Right. If I'm straight forward, I'm going to tip over. And I'm going to do this thing. And it's just not going to be comfortable for my body. So I always have my toes pointed out. Toes pointed out, knees track over the foot. There's no, there's no extra effort in my mind on what my hips are doing. They're just tense, right? I stand here, my glute is tense, but not squeezed. I'm not pushing my hips under me. Right. It's just turned on, ready to turn on when I come out of the hole. Does it matter what kind of shoe you wear? If you yeah, I mean, I would never, not if you turn your feet out, but I would never really squat in these. I wear a heel because it's comfortable and the, the sole is hard, but I can squat the same with a flat, like a deadlift shoe at the same time. I like to squat with a heel just because the shoes are generally high quality. You know, those ones are really solid, they're firm, the heel is solid. Very stiff. Yeah, it's a, it feels more comfortable, it's more confident, right? When you come out of the bar, or come out of the rack, it's like you got something on your foot. A flat shoe feels like sometimes you're soft. Yeah. Right? You can move around well, a little. Also, if you have any sort of mobility issues, uh, sometimes a flat yeah. shoe makes it that much more challenging. Right. Depth. Right. And for me, a huge thing is where my hips are. I didn't have a strong enough back to just overcome a load that was out of position. So I was forced to stay as perfect as I could in the bottom. If I right. come down and a flat shoe is squishy and it kicks back, it, the lift is over for me. You know, if any little error, it's, I, can't, I can't grind it out. So what, this is the way I look at everything all the time. Uh, All-time world records are set both ways in both a flat shoe and, and, a, uh, and, and an Olympic lifting shoe. Yeah. So both ways work. You know, that's a good way to look at things. Are people setting world records in a squat without a belt? No. So everyone should wear a belt. You know, just simple things like that that you watch and you start to learn and pick up. Uh, some people are breaking world records with a wide stance squat. Some people have a closer stance, so it's just going to be up to each person. How do you determine uh, the width of your stance? That's usually individual preference. People that have longer legs generally are going to be able to do whatever they want. They can put them wide or close. Right. If you've got shorter little legs, you're probably not going to go super wide, right? It's just going to be a little more awkward. If your legs are short, you're going to, be, you're going to want to be upright because your leg is short. It's going to be better leverage, right? right. If you've got a long leg, you're going to use your back more so you can go a little wider and get your hips in there a little better, right? right. That's how I look at it. You look at like Cohen's squat. Cohen's got kind of long leg, he's got a shorter body. He tips over a lot more, but he does, he does the best he can with that. I mean, obviously he does, he does the best anyone can with that. Right, right. But he squats a lot more like that. Right. When you look at like Lillibridge, you know, kind of earlier Eric Lillibridge when he was doing a high bar squat, he was a lot more close. Yeah. He's got shorter legs generally than, you know, relative to his body. Right. His feet are in closer. Very thick, thick legs, yeah. Yeah, incredibly thick. And he squats a little more upright. Right. Now he's kind of changed it and he's, he's done a great job of going from like a high bar to a low bar, with just a slight change in the bar placement, his squat looks the same. Yeah. And as he's gotten bigger and stronger, I think he's moved his feet out probably. Out wider, yeah. But that's more a byproduct, I think, of like, you know, his training and his yeah. body weight going up and, and he's and done a great job of it. Moving weights that no one's really ever moved Yeah, before. yeah. He's he's top, top of the food chain when it comes to that. Yeah, for um, sure. 
what about, um, so have you noticed, you know, like a lot of times in, uh, in bench pressing, uh, people will say, oh, you know, kind of work where you're weak, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of lifters, it's common practice to work on close grip bench yeah. pressing to help build up the normal comp grip, which is normally a little bit wider. Have you noticed any discrepancies on, on the squat with that? Like, if somebody squats wider, does it help the close stance or, or the, vice versa? The one thing for me with the squat is, is your quads. You gotta build your quads up. Generally, if you're struggling to squat and your back is adequately strong, your quads are gonna be the weakest link. Right. Your back can be weak and you're gonna build that, you know, deadlifting and straight leg deadlifts and stuff, but it's almost always a quads. Whether it's long legs or short legs, it's quads, right? right? It's, it's kind of how you approach it. If you got shorter legs and you get stronger from squatting, then you just squat more. So I never needed to do a lot of special stuff to make my legs stronger, I just squatted. I used good technique and squatted. You know, other lifters have had to have longer legs. They, they aren't gonna get much better from squatting. Their backs may get destroyed every time, but we use the different exercise for that, right? You see the, uh, like, when you see these squat racks and stuff, and these, some of the squat stands, Yeah. does that anger you? Do you get mad, do you get pissed off about that? Oh, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll go, you know, maybe have to meditate a little bit. And Max had an incident <laughs> some years ago. He, he's kind of, you're over it now. Uh, you're better. It's a sore issue still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he sent me this amazing video of him uh, missing a squat, and. It was the most unbelievable thing in the entire video was the fact that the people in the background just didn't care. Yeah. They're like not even watching. He's got tons of weight on the bar, 660 or 705. something like that. 705. I was trying to squat 705 with a, just a belt. No one gave a flying fuck. Yeah. But the best thing is he goes all ninja warrior on the fucking, uh, on the squat stand. He throws like the, uh, a, a weird, he tries to do the weird move. We'll, we'll cut to the clip, but it, it's pretty yeah. awesome. I think I threw a smoke bomb <laughs> and then disappeared and reappeared and yeah, it was. He tried to do like some sort of weird, crazy karate kid foot sweep to the squat stand and it really didn't work. I, I didn't try, I did it, Mark. <laughs> I did it. It wasn't very successful. It was pretty good. And what but, about, you know, pause squats are real Yeah, popular. I love pause squats. So, I mean. You have different ways of doing them or are you doing the same? Every time, we always pause, I always pause them at the bottom. For right. someone, for you, I would pause at the bottom. I wouldn't pause in the middle because that's not really where you're gonna stick. Right. You're gonna, you're gonna do better if your legs are strong and you pause at the hole, you'll feel your quads better. And I like to stop, when we do a pause squat, I like to stop about an inch or two above mm -hmm. the very bottom. I don't want to sink all the way down. You see like Klokov does some squats really right. low. I just wouldn't, there's no need to do it like that for, for your squat, right? right. Squat a little, stop a little above the very bottom, so all the tension's in your quads. And then you just push again. So I'm not sitting on myself. Yeah, you don't want to sit on yourself. You want all the, all the pressure on your actual muscle. Okay. So that right out of the hole, when you drive, you're going to have, you know, it's, it's better position, I think. That's right. the way I prefer How them. How often are you doing pause squat? Every time we squat, we do pause squat. So we'll do like, a, for the power lifters, they'll do like a back squat first, they'll do the competition squat. Then after that, they'll do a high bar pause squat. Though, after the regular squat, they'll do a pause squat, a couple of sets of pause squat or whatever the workout is. If someone squats more than once or twice a week, then they'll do pause squats maybe on a different day. But generally, I like to do them right after your regular squat workout because that's the hardest workout of the week and you want to do the hardest stuff all in one day, in my opinion, because you got a big deadlift workout coming up later, right? right? I, uh, I can't really do a front squat, but I know that you uh, hit, I don't, hit some massive weights on a front squat. You think it's... Power you know, need to do it, they should do it, or? I think some powerlifters get something out of it, but in general, I don't, I don't have my powerlifters do front squats. I like, I think you can develop your quads a little bit faster with the hip squat, the belt squats, right. and it takes your back completely out of the movement, so you're forced to use your legs. That, to me, is a little bit more effective. You don't, the, the front squats, sometimes they just can't get into position. Someone like you, or yeah. a lot of people, once they bench press, you know, pretty significant weights their chest and arms are so big that it's just awkward right I mean you can chest certainly yeah huge, massive I you can you. certainly do it I mean there's guys like Kendall out there yeah, yeah, yeah. squatting over eight with front yeah, squat um, but in his case I mean he's you know he's like near his almost his front squats almost as much as his, uh, his yeah, regular yeah, squat I, I, mean, no, it's insane. I mean his legs are super strong but all right take us over to the yeah. belt squat let's check that out yeah Max is gonna take me through uh, some stuff on the belt squat here um, just uh, something to help build up my quads. I got a shitty quad, so he's gonna kind of talk me through it as I'm going. All right, so I don't know where you normally hook it on there, but. Where yeah. you want me to? Yeah, either one. Any okay. one of those is fine. Just some movement. <clears throat> so you stand up, bring your feet in where you would normally squat. Okay. Keep your weight in the middle of your foot. You want the belt to sit as low as possible on your hips. 
So it's right down like, yeah, just off your back. Oh, you don't yeah, want to use your back at all. And then from there, you're going to keep your weight in the middle of your foot. The first thing you do is just push your knee forward and squat down. Drive your knee basically into my hand, right? So you push it forward and squat. There you go. And then sit down and then come back up. As you, yeah. Not on my, off my heels too much. Midfoot, midfoot. Keep your knee here against my hand, then stand back up. Good. The thing that's amazing about this thing is it pulls you down in forward. position. Yeah. The key is to keep your hips forward and your knees forward, right? So that your quads are doing the work. It's making me shake all over the place. Yeah, and then legs. Go. Yeah. Is it okay to hold here? Or? Yeah, you can hold it. I mean, just so you don't fall backward. I haven't used this one before, but it looks really nice. There you go. Keep your knees forward, yeah. You feel it in your legs, your oh quads? Oh my god. They're fucking burning <clears throat> like crazy already. Yeah. And that's what I do. So every time you come up, you're always firing from the leg, right? The quad stays where, your, your knee stays where you want it, over your foot, and then you push your leg. Midfoot, and then okay, stay forward, there you go. There you go. Yeah, that. And drive hard through the midfoot. Keep all that pressure on the quad, right at the bottom, don't fall back at all at the bottom. Yeah, if you have to stay a little oh. higher so you don't stay on your, you <laughs> fall back at all, that's what you want. Yeah, don't let anything come backward. Everything stays on the leg. There it is. That's, that's like the main accessory movement. The best part about this machine, this kind of stuff, is that if you need to do it, it's probably really hard for you. Right. And then you, it's really quick. It comes on really fast. Your progress goes really quick. I do this usually over front squats for almost every one of my lifters. I mean, weightlifters and powerlifters. Right. Because uh, a lot of weightlifters, same problem. They'll squat for, you know, I, you know I, I squatted for a year and did all these squat programs that didn't get anywhere. And you do this exercise for one training cycle and immediately they get, you know, 40, 50 pounds in their squat. And so that's like my favorite thing is belt squat is like, that's the go-to for squat. Any quick fix if somebody doesn't have those machines? Yeah, there's a great thing. You buy a, like a dip belt and then you buy uh, like a pin or even just a long chain. Something like this? Yeah, like that. And then you just hook weights to it and you this stand. like 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, I mean, maybe if even. And then you stand on two blocks, two plyo boxes, right? We don't have one of these. We have we have like a handle, and they hold it with a handle. That's not as good as the belt because yeah. you're still using your back a little. Right. But with a belt, just a dip belt and a weight pin, or you know, just strap the weights to your to your hips. Yeah, you can get creative standing on a couple boxes. And somewhere. the best part is, if you're most people are you know not squatting in the 600 range, if you need to do the exercise, you're probably going to get a, a lot out of light weights because you're really weak at it. So right. it's really convenient. It's you know you get a little setup going, and then you have a whole you know. Fantastic yeah. exercise. It's yeah, not necessary to get a bunch. Pound dumbbell yeah. for a little while. Too. Yeah, yeah, if even. Right. So that's a great exercise, and I do like five by ten, five sets of ten, maybe, maybe two times, three times a week. You can do right. as much as you want. I mean, try to build on it as fast as possible, and you'll get a lot out of it. And then your quads will get strong, and you have a big squat. There we go. Well, you guys have been watching this channel for a long time. You've seen Ed Cohn come through. You've seen some other great lifters come through, and they've had an impact on my training. And each time somebody comes through, they have an impact. And uh, hopefully this uh, helps take my squat to the next level. I won't compete probably for like a year because I got to fuck my elbow. I got to unfuck my elbow. Uh, but when I do, hopefully I'll have a good squat to show for it. Appreciate all the help, Max. Yeah. Awesome. Max is moving down to uh, Orange County, California, where he's going to be kicking it with Juggernaut, the ever so fat Juggernaut, Chad Wesley Smith. Make sure you check them out down there if you're ever in the Los Angeles area. Anywhere near Orange County, make sure you check out yep. Juggernaut. Make sure you check this guy out. Yep. We're lifting and powerlifting. We're going to take over. Wealth knowledge. And as I always say, strength is never weakness. And that is it from Super Training Gym.